This is Mariana and Katerina. Since this is our first video, we'll say a little bit about who we are and how we ended up working with this project. The considerations that we've had, our thoughts and our process, and what our main concerns and focus has been throughout developing the concept for My Child Love and Sport. So, me and Mariana, we work for a company called Serepta Studio. We're a game development company that works on our own IPs, uh, and occasionally we do some contracting work. Uh, Ellen came to us saying that she had funding for a concept to uh, create a game about the Lemonsborn kids. Um, the goal was to reach uh, a younger audience than the documentary would. Um, and we talked a lot around the subject of how can these things happen, what is actually the important topic here, um, what do we want people to know without overloading them and without being too preachy. As we were developing the concept for My Child Lebensborn, there is always that balance that you have to find between how abstract you're going to be or how specific. I think the challenging thing with making a game like this, um, something that's based on true stories, is of course the fact that you have this heavy weight, you need to make sure that you do things right. And that's probably going to make us uh, second guess ourselves a lot more. I know that I get stuck quite often. Uh, because I'm not sure about things. Of course, then I have these books to read, uh, so that helps. One of the hardest things for me, as we were developing the concept for my child Levensport, was that I actually had to research Nazi imagery, and the action of typing that into Google image search, and looking at pictures of swastikas and old Nazi uniforms. Yeah, you're you're gonna get a bit sad at times and a bit frustrated with what has happened and you know, humanity in general. Um, but the upsides of that is also that you know that you're trying to make things better. Um, there's a lot of content to go from, um, a lot to work with, um, and at the same time you kind of, you have a stronger goal, I guess. Um, because you know that this is a story you want told and you know what you want people to feel. So we had a lot of discussions back and forth on what the concept should be like and sort of how close to the actual setting we should be. I mean, we thought about should it be said in modern times, should it be said in the actual post-war times, and should it be set in Norway? Should it be set somewhere else? But in the end, we decided that we wanted this to be set in the actual setting where we are getting these stories from, which is Norway after the Second World War. We brainstormed a lot, um, came up with a lot of different ideas. Um, I think the important thing we did was really do a lot of different research. We looked into different games um, within the topic Games for Change. Uh, we looked at Papers, Please, uh, This War of Mine. And then there was an interesting site um, called Game Trekking. I think there are about 10 games there. Um, really short games talking about heavy, uh, heavy concepts. And the one that really got to me was one called I think it was called A Brief History of Cambodia. Um, and much like the game uh, Loneliness, you only really um, have these pixels to work with. Uh, but even though you're just working with pixels, um, the way they set things up, the way the interaction works, the way the visual cues work, uh, creates a really heavy game. So I encourage you to, to take a look at that game. Um, I did a lot of research. Uh, it's also important to uh, read a lot. Um, I mean, I have these books. Um, this is a book that has a compilation of about 110 interviews 
with the Lebes born kids, and this actually um, does a lot of analysis around it, so that's interesting. Um, I actually also ordered a self biography by one of the Lebes born kids, um, and it was very apparent that this wasn't, you know, this guy didn't have a lot of copies. I'm not sure if I ordered it from from the person that had written it himself or his family, but ordering something like that and reading it, um, it's actually a bit of a tough experience. Um, my yellow marker was going over um, scenes, topics that I wanted to address in the game, but at certain points I just couldn't move that marker anymore, so you know that these things are happening, but reading about it um, from someone who's, who has first-hand experiences is, is quite different. Young people in Europe, and also in our country, learn about the war, the Second World War, when they're in school. The thing is, we learn that Norway was occupied by Nazi Germany. They had soldiers here. The people eventually became free again once the war ended. And then everyone was happy. Of course, in school you learn about the fact that the country was in financial ruin and that thanks to the United States of America and what was called the Marshall Aid, we managed to get back on our feet again. What we don't tell is the story of the Levinsborn children. And I think what it does is that it misrepresents what our society was like. It misrepresents what a situation is like in a country that has been occupied for five years during a war and then suddenly becomes free. And this is something that is relevant still today and is something that is worth discussing and looking into. And that is part of the reason why I was convinced that we should definitely make this game. We have these situations today and we shouldn't be afraid to look into them, to discuss them, to get them out in the open. And by getting a more true and nuanced look at what things are at what things are like, I believe we can develop more as a society and as people. We do have a lot of advisors to work with, so even though it's a very heavy topic and you do feel a burden of getting it right, um, I do know that these people are gonna uh, are gonna reel us in and they're gonna help us out and steer us in the right direction. It's also important for us to do a lot of testing. So we've had kind of this little focus group testing with um, some 12 year olds to see how they would react to the game. Um, if the topic was too heavy, if they understood what was happening, if they even cared. And they did care quite a lot. For the next weeks, we will be doing a three-parter about the Lebensborn program. I think that concludes this week's video. I hope that you got something out of it. Um, please come with any uh, constructive criticism uh, and thoughts on what we could do better and what you would like to hear about. Uh, if you have any personal experiences, um, please also share that with us. If you liked this video, and want to continue following our process, please click the subscribe button. So, until next time.